record keeping. For any contribution made in cash, regardless of the amount, you must maintain as a record of the contribution a bank record such as cancel check or credit card statement or a written record from the charity. So the written record must include the name of the charity, date, and the amount of the contribution. If you made contributions through payroll deduction, see publication 526 for information on the records you must keep. Don't attach the record to your tax return. Instead, keep it and your other tax records. We talked about that before in the prior line. For, for contributions of $250 or more, you must also have a co contemporaneous written acknowledgement from the charitable organization. See gifts of $250 or more earlier that we talked about. You will still need to keep a record of when you made the cash contribution if the contemporaneous written acknowledgement doesn't include that information. Qualified contributions in general. You can elect to treat gifts by cash or check as qualified contributions if the gift was paid in 2022 to a qualified charitable organization. This ele election isn't available for contributions to an organization described in IRC 509A3 or for, once one more time, this election isn't available for contributions to an organization described in IRC Internal Revenue Code 509A3 or for the establishment of a new or maintenance of an existing donor adv uh, advised fund. For more details there, you can see publication 526. And uh, qualified contributions are not subject to a limit based on a percentage of adjusted gross income. However, certain limits may apply if your qualified contributions are more than the amount on form 1040 or 1040 SR line 11. I believe that's the AGI minus all other uh, allowable contributions. For details, you can see publication 526. Uh, include any contributions that you elect to treat as qualified contributions and the total amount reported on line 11. Indicate the election by also entering the amount of your qualified contributions on the dotted line next to line 11 entry space. Line 12, other than by cash or check. So enter on line 12, the total value of your contribution of property other than by cash or check unless a limit on deducting gifts applies to you. So now we've got other formats that we're giving gifts in, not just cash or the check. So for more information about the limits on deducting gifts, see a limit on the amount you can deduct earlier. If your deduction is limited, you may have to carry to the next year. So we got that carry forward thing once again. Deduction for gifts other than by cash or check limited. If your duct deduction for the contribution of property other than by cash or check is limited, you can see publication 526 to figure the amount you can deduct. Only enter on line 12 the deductible value of your contribution as property other than by cash or check. Valuing contributions of used items. So here's a common issue that comes up. Well, it's a used item. I don't know what, how, what the value is of it. It's a, a used thing. So if you gave used items such as clothing or furniture, furniture, deduct their fair market value at the time you gave them. Fair market value is what uh, a willing buyer would pay a willing seller when neither has to buy or sell and both are aware of the uh, conditions of the sale. So that although makes sense like in theory <laughs> is difficult to know because how do you know what a willing buyer and a willing seller would if i knew what a willing buyer would pay for it i would be selling it to the willing buyer and whatnot so so you're gonna have to do some estimation right there so for more details on determining the value of the donated property you can see publication 561 so that's always a frustrating kind of component when you've got these gifts to charity of like clothing and stuff so deduction uh more than 500 dollars if the amount of your deduction is more than $500, you must complete and attach form 8283. For this purpose, the quote amount of your deduction end quote means your deduction before applying any income limits that could result in a carryover of contributions. 